The Life of Levi Ackerman from Attack on Titan Levi Ackerman, often referred to formally as Captain Levi, is the squad captain of the Special Operations Squad within the Scout Regiment and is said to be humanity's strongest soldier. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Levi Ackerman. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Early Life Levi was born to Kuchel Ackerman, a prostitute who worked in the underground and was impregnated by one of her clients. One day, Kenny Ackerman, Kuchel's older brother, came to the city to see her only to find that she was dead. There he found a young and squalid Levi sitting in front of his mother's bed. In a rare showing of compassion, Kenny decided to take care of him. He raised Levi as well as he could, teaching him knife skills, how to get along with people, and violent behavior. Levi also learned to use his own inner power that he possessed as a member of the Ackerman family. Time passed, and eventually, Kenny taught Levi everything he knew. However, he did not consider himself as a good father figure. One day, in the subterranean city, Levi started a fight which he won easily. At that moment, Kenny decided to leave him behind, satisfied that he had taught Levi the skills he needed to survive. Levi eventually became acquainted with the Furlan Church. Ferlin decided to test Levi's strength by having him fight a group of thugs. Ferlin's plan was to see if Levi was worth recruiting into his group of thugs or not, and he was surprised to see Levi beat them all single-handedly. The two became friends and eventually started a gang together. After one of many heists pulled with their gang, Ferlin was placed in charge of dividing the profits for the job among his comrades. Knowing that Jan was suffering from a leg injury and would need extra money to afford medicine, Ferlin gave Jan a larger cut compared to everyone else. Noticing this, Levi requested to know why Ferlin had been giving Jan preferential treatment. As Ferlin was explaining, he was interrupted by the arrival of a young girl at their hideout's doorstep. Seeing that she was being pursued, they scare off her pursuers and Isabel reveals that she was trying to get a bird up to the surface. That is why she was trying to sneak up the stairs. Having seen the two of them perform heists using omnidirectional mobility gear, she asks if she can become one of them. Levi agrees by saying she must first learn how to clean. After she is trained and sets the bird free, the trio is approached about a job. Their advance payment is the treatment of their crippled friend Jan, who had already been taken away to a surface clinic. Levi views the arrangement as their client taking a hostage rather than offering payment, and their client sweetens the deal by saying if they succeed, they will receive the right to live on the surface. A Choice with No Regrets, Part 1 as the trio prepares for a heist, Ferlin lets Levi know that he has confirmed the identity of the man offering the job and that Jan is safely in a first-rate clinic. This is the real deal. Levi tells his teammates to act normal, and if their targets appear, they start the job. Shortly after the heist begins, the trio is pursued by more than the usual military police. Levi recognizes the wings of freedom and that the newcomers are from the scout regiment. The trio split up and Levi tries to dodge his pursuers by diving through a building and exiting through a different window. He fights with Mike Zacharias until their battle is interrupted by the arrival of Erwin Smith. The two face off and Erwin tells Levi to stop and look around. Levi sees that Isabel and Ferlin have been captured and he reluctantly surrenders. The trio is shackled at the wrist while Erwin interrogates them about where they obtained their mobility gear and their training. He recognizes Levi as the leader and asks if he was ever in the military. When Levi does not answer, Mike grabs his head and slams his face into a dirty puddle. Seeing Levi's mistreatment, Ferlin insists that they were all self-taught. Erwin then offers Levi a deal. He will not be charged for his crimes if he joins the scout regiment. If Levi refuses, they will be handed over to the military police who are unlikely to treat them well. After a moment's consideration, Levi agrees. A Choice with No Regrets, Part 2 Levi and his friends are assigned to Flagon's squad. Their new section commander is not fond of them and tells them to keep their barracks clean, implying that because they came from the underground, cleanliness would be a foreign concept to them. Levi nearly loses his temper, but Ferlin intervenes and manages to appease Flagon. He also reminds Levi that they do not want to cause a scene. The three of them intended to be captured and recruited as part of the job for their client. They're there for two reasons, to retrieve a document in Irwin's possession, and then to kill Irwin Smith. They undergo training as part of their cover. Though Flagon initially disapproves of the way Levi chooses to hold one blade facing backward, Levi proves to be extremely competent with his unorthodox style. However, the trio has no luck finding the document and conclude that Irwin would probably keep something that important on his person at all times. 
The upcoming expedition should be the best time to steal the document and kill Erwin because these scouts will all be focused on the Titans, but Levi tells his friends to stay behind. None of them have ever fought Titans before, and it will be dangerous. Ferlin and Isabel convince Levi to believe in them though, so he gives in and the three of them depart on the expedition the next day. Before long, Titans appear. Levi kills one of them by himself and worries when another grabs Isabel, but she manages to free herself and Ferlin kills it. Despite the three being proud of their success, Erwin scolds them for having used too much gas, which irritates Levi, who asks if he is supposed to prioritize his equipment over the lives of his friends. Shortly after, heavy rainfalls begin to limit visibility. Levi realizes that this is their best opportunity to kill Erwin and to get the document without being seen. He tells Ferlin and Isabel to stay behind so that the formation doesn't notice the three of them abandoning their position. The two of them wish him luck as he rides ahead. Before he gets far, he discovers a large number of bodies where an abnormal titan is torn through the scout regiment formation. He realizes that he must have ridden right past it and turns back around to find his friends. Levi arrives too late and only finds Isabel's severed head and Ferlin's torso. He goes blind with rage and tears apart a titan with unbelievable speed, even cutting off its head entirely. As the rain dies down, Erwin finds him crying by the corpse of the titan. Erwin calls him unsightly for being the only survivor. Levi lunges at him with the intention of killing him, but Erwin grabs his blade and reveals that he always knew of Levi's intentions. He is too late. The document is already on its way to Commander-in-Chief Zachary. This stuns Levi. He realizes how much he has lost and that the job was over before it even began. Before Levi's mentality can sink any further, Erwin tells him not to regret his choices or eventually he will no longer be able to make any of his own. Levi decides to stay with the scouts and as another expedition starts, he tells himself that he will not regret his choice. Ilse's Notebook, Notes from a Scout Regiment Member in the year 850, as the scout regiment prepares to depart on their 49th exterior scouting mission, Hange tries to convince Levi to help them capture a titan alive. Before she can finish her pitch, Levi immediately refuses. When Hange breaks away from the regiment to pursue a titan on their own, Erwin sends Levi's squad to keep Hange safe. Oruo Bozad tries to kill the titan, but Hange intervenes and stops him, causing Oruo to get caught by the titan. Levi quickly slays the titan, saving Oruo's life, before confronting Hange, enraged that they endangered his soldiers' lives. He's interrupted by Petra Rall, who points out a soldier's corpse that had been enshrined in a nearby tree. As they investigate the body, Levi finds a notebook nearby recording the soldier's final experiences. Following the expedition, Levi accompanies Oruo as he goes to apologize for Hange for insulting them during the expedition. As they return to the scout regiment's headquarters, Levi informs Hange that the information from the notebook they recovered has convinced Erwin to allow them to start trying to capture Titans alive. The Struggle for Trost Arc Levi is seen leaving Trost District along with the rest of the scout regiment on the 56th exterior scouting mission. As the scouts are waiting for the signal to depart, Levi takes the opportunity to insult Hange. While on the expedition, Levi sees a scout caught in the jaws of a nearby titan and kills it. As more titans approach, Levi orders Petra to take care of the injured scout while he, Gunther Schultz, and El Jin take care of the remaining titans. After clearing the immediate area, Levi checks on the injured scout who is quickly succumbing to his injuries. In an attempt to comfort the scout in his dying moments, Levi assures him that he has done his duty well. As the scout dies, Erwin arrives and informs Levi that they are returning to Trost. Levi is unwilling to go back so soon, but is forced to concede when Erwin informs him that Wall Rose has possibly been breached. Levi arrives back in Trost in time to find two titans bearing down on four soldiers at the base of the wall. He quickly kills the titans and demands that the soldiers fill him in on what has happened. Three days later, after Aaron awakes in the dungeon beneath the courthouse, Levi assures him that the higher-ups will let him join the scout regiment, and that he himself will make sure that Aaron does not get out of hand. Should that happen, Levi says he will not hesitate to cut Eren down. Eve of the Counterattack Arc After Eren issues a verbal challenge to the spectators during his trial, Levi violently beats him on the spot, mainly by kicking him and mockingly observes that while chained on his knees, Eren is perfectly placed for Levi's kicks. Armin has to restrain an infuriated Mikasa from coming to Eren's rescue and killing Levi. She glares at Levi after the trial, and Levi appears unsettled by her. The beating was an act of theater which Mikasa was not aware of, designed to convince all witnesses that Levi can keep Eren under control, while the military police regiment cannot. 
After the trial, Levi hands Aaron over to his special squad for the next month. They move into the castle that is the old Scout Regiment HQ in Sidewall Rose. Levi orders Aaron to sleep in the castle dungeon so that if he accidentally transforms, he will not cause problems. During the month Aaron was with Levi's squad, Hongei conducts experiments to try to get Aaron to transform. If Aaron goes out of control in Titan form, Levi intends to cut him out of the nape in a manner that would sever his human limbs, which would grow back in any case. However, Aaron fails to transform and his hands do not heal from his bites. The squad decides to postpone any further experiments until, while having tea with them, Aaron leans over to pick up a spoon and accidentally generates a partial Titan body. The alarmed squad threatens him and Levi has to defuse the situation. Levi tells Aaron not to take their actions personally and that they have good intentions. Later, after Hange explains why Aaron triggered his Titan form, Levi's entire squad punishes themselves and apologizes to Aaron for acting on assumption. The 57th Exterior Scouting Mission Arc During the 57th Exterior Scouting Mission, Levi and his team are ordered to ride in the safest area of Irwin's formation. When the formation is suddenly attacked by a horde of titans coming at their right flank, they change course towards the Forest of Giant Trees, and Levi's squad takes the central route. Once the female titan appears, the squad begins to beg Levi to give them orders, but he continues to ride forward and looks straight ahead. Aaron badly wants to transform and fight the female titan, but Petra and her comrades urge him to trust them, and Aaron hesitates. Levi tells Aaron he's not wrong for wanting to transform, that nobody can know the correct choice until after they have made it and there are results. Whatever Aaron chooses to do, Levi says, he should do it and believe he will not regret it. Aaron declares that he trusts in his squad's victory and they keep going through the forest. This enables the scout regiment to capture the female titan. Shortly afterwards, Levi separates from his squad. He reunites with Erwin and prepares to extract the human in control of the female titan from the nape of her neck. He and Mike attack her to try and cut her hands, only to discover her ability to harden her skin. After Erwin orders the cannons to be loaded with explosives and aimed at the female titan's wrists, Levi, standing on her head, taunts her with threats of violence, telling her that he would like to face her in her human form over the deaths of countless of his soldiers. In response, the female titan begins to roar. Shortly after, titans come at her from all directions, seeking to devour her. On Erwin's order, Levi and the rest of the scout regiment elite try and protect her from them, but they fail. Erwin orders the scouts to retreat back to Kalaneth district. However, Erwin notes that the steam from the titan bodies will make it difficult for the rest of the scout regiment to see the signal flares. When he realizes that the human inside the female titan may have escaped, he orders Levi to replenish his gas canisters and blades. After the female titan returns and kills Levi's entire squad, he and Mikasa join forces to retrieve Eren from her. Levi tells Mikasa to distract the titan but avoid trying to kill her. Levi then proceeds to attack the female titan and after a series of successful attacks, he incapacitates her. Seeing that the female titan is now helpless, Mikasa disobeys Levi's orders and attempts to assassinate her. In saving her from the female titan's hardened fist, Levi injures his left leg. Using the momentum gained from the last attack, he cuts through the female titan's facial muscles, causing her to open her mouth and reveal Eren inside. He grabs Eren and flees with him and Mikasa, whom he scolds for having risked the life of her special friend for the sake of vengeance. During the scout regiment's retreat to Kalaneth, the remainder of the scouts are attacked by several titans after one of the soldiers went to retrieve back the body of his fallen comrade. As the titans close in on one of the carts, Levi, who cannot fight because of his injury, orders that the dead be rolled out of the cart to lighten the load so they can outrun the titans. One of the corpses is that of Petra. Her shroud blows off and her body is trampled. However, the unloading of the dead enables the living to outrun the pursuing titans. As they enter the Kalaneth Gate after retreating, the scout regiment receives a hostile response from the public for their failed mission. Levi is approached by Petra's father, who reveals that she wrote to him frequently. He tells Levi that, as a father, he is worried about her decision to dedicate her life to him, as she is still quite young and has her whole life ahead of her. Levi continues to walk away silently without responding. Attack on Stohes Ark A few days later, Aaron is summoned to the capital for a trial to decide his fate. Beforehand, Levi, Erwin, Aaron, and the other survivors reunite in the Old Scout Regiment HQ. Armin tells him his theory about the female titan's true identity. Levi himself, still injured, does not participate in the subsequent operation in the Stohes district. However, in the final moments of Aaron and Annie's battle, Levi, despite his injury, rescues Aaron from his titan form before Annie's crystallization of her own titan can trap him. 
Clash of the Titans arc. When Titans are spotted in Wall Rose, Levi accompanies Hange and the majority of the scout regiment as they head towards Ermich District. Pastor Nick of the Order of the Walls involuntarily joins them, and Levi keeps an eye on him with a pistol ready. Although Nick does not disclose any valuable information, he does tell them of somebody who knows about the secret of the walls and is allowed to reveal it to the public if she so wishes. Levi arrives in Tross District with the Scout Regiment, though his injury from fighting the female Titan forces him to remain a bystander. Circumstances have forced the military police out of the interior to help fight the Titans, and a few of them express disappointment to not have seen any Titans nearby. Levi calls their bluff by inviting them to join the scout regiment any day so they can go outside of the walls to fight them. The military police back down. Following Aaron's rescue, Levi joins Dot Pixis by Erwin's bedside, where the commander is recovering after the loss of his arm. Hange and Connie report their findings on the theory of Ragako Village, and she says their findings support the theory that Titans were at some point humans. Levi's expression sours at the thought that he could have been flying around killing people all this time. Hange offers him some comfort, saying that there's no solid proof of this. Levi watches Hange and Connie leave, then turns to find Erwin smiling strangely. He asks Erwin what the hell he's smiling for, to which Erwin replies they are one step closer to the truth. Skeptical, Levi tells him they will run out of men before they can uncover it. The Uprising Arc Sometime later, Levi selects a number of scout regiment recruits to join Squad Levi, assigning them to protect Aaron and Historia in an isolated forest cabin. Levi eventually joins his squad at the cabin, checking the underside of a table for dust. Finding it dirty, he expresses his dissatisfaction with their cleaning, but postpones that discussion for later. Instead, he takes the squad out to work on Hange's experiment regarding Aaron's powers. After the experiment goes poorly, Levi comments that the plan to use Aaron's Titan abilities to seal the hole in Shinganshina District is a good one, but they are still a long way from achieving it. That evening in Tross District, as Erwin reads the report that Levi has brought regarding Hange's failed experiment, Levi tells him the problem is that they lack information about the hardening ability. He wonders if they should get the information they need through Historia. After Hange returns with the report about the death of Pastor Nick, Levi was present as Hange described the scene they saw. From the fact that all his fingernails had been torn out, Levi is able to conclude that Nick had not talked before being killed which means that the military police does not know the scouts are looking into the Rice family. Afterwards, Nifa arrives with a message from Erwin. On reading it, Levi orders everyone to move out and to leave no trace that they were here. By sunset, the cabin is swarmed by military police, but Levi and Hange's squads are already outside in the woods. Levi reveals that the government has frozen all scout activity outside the wall and demanded that Aaron and Historia be handed over. Levi decides to take everyone to Tross District because it would be safer than the interior and they can use omnidirectional mobility gear in the city. Hange decides that they and Moblet will go after Erwin, but she leaves Abel, Keiji, and Nifa behind to assist Levi. After Armin and Jean disguised as Aaron and Historia are kidnapped, Levi and his squad track them to an abandoned warehouse. As one of them molests Armin, Mikasa warns Levi that the disguises are not going to last. Noting that the kidnappers appear to be amateurs, he leaves the situation in his squad's hands while he goes to Eren. Elsewhere, Levi joins Nifa on a rooftop, where they have a good view of Keiji's journey through the city with Eren and Historia. However, even though the body double decoy was a success, Levi realizes that using such amateurs does not feel like a military police operation. He asks Nifa if she's heard of Kenny the Ripper, and assures her that the legendary mass murderer is a real person. Levi grew up with him, and this operation feels like something Kenny would do. He realizes too late that in Kenny's place, he would have two groups tailing the wagon from the rear, from a high place with a view, just like where they are now. Levi tries to warn Nifa, but is too late as Kenny blows off part of her head using ODM that has been modified to carry a shotgun instead of a blade. More soldiers appear, of a unit that has not been seen before, and one of them kills Abel. Kenny taunts Levi as he stalks up the rooftop and reloads his guns, and Levi screams as he draws his blades to retaliate. Levi makes a break for it, frustrated that Kenny can read all of his moves and shocked that Kenny of all people has become an MP. Members of the military police regiment ambush Levi as he takes cover in a bar to avoid being shot. Kenny follows him inside. The two of them exchange barbs about their past while Kenny talks. Levi takes the opportunity to load the barkeeper's rifle and reposition an alcohol bottle, allowing him to see Kenny in its reflection. Levi then shoots Kenny by aiming with the bottle's reflection. The shot hits the chair Kenny is holding, but is strong enough to throw him back outside, and Levi takes the opportunity to escape. 
He tosses a chair through the window to distract the squad members outside before emerging himself, killing several of his pursuers during the escape. Levi begins pursuing the wagon carrying Aaron and Historia, running into his squad along the way. He orders them to chase the wagon and kill their opponents given the chance. They manage to retake the wagon, but Gene is unable to do so and finds himself on the wrong side of a gun. Armin manages to shoot the soldier in time, saving Jean, but Levi and Sasha are forced to pull both of them out of the wagon to keep them from being killed, resulting in the loss of Aaron and Historia. Returning to the warehouse, Armin is deeply bothered to have killed someone, and Levi attempts to comfort him by explaining to him that he was able to pull the trigger because he knew that if he did not, then Jean would have died. Levi then confronts the kidnapper's ringleader, Demo Reeves. Learning that Reeves was coerced into aiding Kenny, Levi proposes that the Reeves company take up with the scout regiment in exchange for protection and aid in rebuilding trust, to which Reeves reluctantly agrees. Reeves lures two military policemen into an ambush by Levi and his squad, allowing them to take the men captive. Not bothering to ask many questions, Levi immediately begins torturing Sanus until Hange and Moblet arrive to help. Hange and Levi torture Sanus, but he refuses to divulge any information to them. After more torture only results in Sanus begging that they kill him, Hange and Levi leave and force Ralph at knife point to read a script outside of Sanus' door, making him believe he's been betrayed and is considered a lunatic by his comrades. This causes the man to break, revealing to Hange the secret of the Rice family, the true rulers of mankind. Following Sanus' confession, Levi and Hange reveal the information they gleaned from Sanus as well as her theory that Rod Rice is planning to eat Eren. Mikasa is very upset at the prospect and attempts to leave to find Eren, and Levi is forced to talk her down and convince her that they need a plan of action to rescue him. After the scout regiment is accused of trying to monopolize Eren's titan powers, the government begins arresting all members of the organization. Levi and the rest of squad Levi avoid being captured and camp out in the woods outside of Stohes while discussing a plan to rescue Eren and Historia. Sasha warns them of approaching MPs and Levi and his squad capture them. They take their uniforms with the intention of infiltrating the military police to find out where Aaron and Historia have been taken. Before he can announce their fates, one of the soldiers, Hitch Drace, challenges him over the civilian deaths in Stohes District and berates him for causing Annie Leonhardt's death during the conflict. Levi informs them that Annie was the Titan hiding in Stohes and is currently being held for the destruction she caused. The other soldier, Marlo Freudenberg, asks if the scout regiment really killed the people from the Reeves company and Levi replies that it was the interior military police, which causes Marlo to offer helping him to set things right. Levi is skeptical, but Jean steps in and asks if he can handle the two, which Levi allows. Jean tests their character to see where their hearts truly lie, and when it's clear that they have no intention of killing him or following their original orders, he convinces Levi to trust them. Marlo and Hitch direct Levi's squad to a nearby MP checkpoint that they should be able to overtake. As they're preparing to attack, Levi sends the two back to their own squads so their superiors will not get suspicious. The infiltration goes successfully, with the interior MPs being disabled rather than killed, and Levi takes one of them hostage to interrogate about Aaron and Historia's location. The MP refuses to talk, instead spouting off about how the scout regiment will be lucky to survive and how Erwin and the other captured soldiers will be executed. Undeterred, Levi savagely twists and breaks the MP's arm for not answering his question. Explaining that those who join the scouts all understand that some lives are more important than others, he again asks where Aaron and Historia are being held. The MP is panicked and confesses that he does not know where they are. Kenny Ackerman is extremely tight-lipped about it. Both Levi and Mikasa are surprised to hear the last name, but they are interrupted by people approaching on foot before they can question the MP further. However, the newcomers turn out to be Hange and Moblet, who have come with news that the military's coup has been successful. As his squad celebrates, Levi apologizes to Hange that he lost three people they loaned him. He points out that they still do not have any leads on Eren and Historia, but Hange reveals information that Erwin gathered on the Rice family, saying that it may be of use. Rod's entire family was slaughtered by bandits on the day of Wal Maria's fall, just a few days before he went to try and receive Historia, leading Levi to conclude that there's something special about their bloodline. Hange reveals that the underground chapel they were in at the time was destroyed and that Rod rebuilt it with his own money. Theorizing that the chapel is important to him, the squad elects to investigate it next. En route to the chapel, Levi warns his squad that Kenny will be their biggest obstacle because fighting him will be like fighting Levi himself. Levi asks Mikasa if she thinks Kenny might be related to her since they share the same last name, Ackerman, but she does not directly answer. She only knows that her father's family was persecuted and not the reason why. Levi then asks whether she experienced a moment when she felt a sudden power awaken inside her, 
Upon confirming this, Levi tells Mikasa that he and Kenny also experienced such moments in their lives. They arrive at the chapel and find the secret door leading underground. Levi and the others make preparations for facing the anti-personnel control squad, which is waiting for them below. The group sends barrels of gunpowder and bags of oil down the stairs, setting fire to them and filling the underground chamber with smoke, reducing visibility and the usefulness of firearms. Most of the squad exacerbates the problem with signal flares while Levi and Mikasa scout out their enemies. Levi calls for his squad to take them down, and the team springs into action. During the battle, Levi tries to kill the squad's ringleader but is ambushed by Kenny. Levi takes cover from Kenny's gunfire, and immediately anticipating that Kenny will flank him, successfully counters the older man's next attack. Kenny proceeds to fire upon nearby platforms set up through the cavern, causing debris to rain down on Levi, leaving him distracted. Levi successfully parries Kenny's next knife attack and tries to retreat out of range, but is immediately fired upon. Levi is prepared and tosses a pouch of gasoline into the air, which is ignited by Kenny's blasts. The resulting explosion allows Levi to land a successful blow, cutting Kenny across the midsection and forcing him to retreat. Before Levi can pursue, he is distracted by the sight of Hange being badly wounded by one of Kenny's squad members. The squad finds their way blocked by a barricade created by Kenny's squad, but before they can find a way to circumnavigate it, they see the light from a titan transformation deeper in the cavern. The resulting quakes shake loose the barricade, and Levi leaves Armin and Moblet to take care of Hange as the rest of the squad proceeds. The squad finds Rod Rice transforming into a titan and Historia trying to free Eren from his chains. When she's blown back, Levi, Connie, and Jean take the keys to set him free. Making matters worse, the roof begins to collapse from the size of Rod's Titan, and the team is trapped against the wall of the chamber. Aaron is hesitant to ask until Levi pushes him enough to make a choice, just like he did back when they were facing the female Titan. The memory is enough to get Aaron on his feet. He grabs the armor bottle that has fallen out of Rod's bag and breaks it between his teeth as he transforms. Aaron's Titan form then crystallizes, stabilizing the cavern around the squad, preventing them from being crushed. Levi and his squad exit the cavern through a hole made in the ceiling above and see the trail of destruction left in the wake of Rod Rice's Titan. Armin believes it's abnormal since it is ignoring them, and Levi tells everyone that they're going after it. Aaron entertains the possibility of being eaten by Rod, since that would turn him back into a human who would then have the powers of the founding Titan, but Levi disabuses him of this notion. Even if they turn Rod Rice back into a human, they would still have to undo the First King's brainwashing in order to get him to help them. Erwin meets up with them, and Levi briefs him on the situation. The scout regiment regroups in Orvud district in preparation to fight Rod. Before attending the meeting to discuss a strategy to defeat Rod's Titan, Levi briefs Historia on Erwin's plan to make her the next ruler of the Walls, and Historia accepts on the condition that she'd be allowed to take part in the operation to kill Rod. As Rod reaches the wall, Levi watches the garrison's cannon attacks against Rod, noting how ineffective they are. When the Titan reaches the wall, Levi and his squad move forward with Erwin's plan to cripple Rod's hands with explosives and have Aaron shove barrels of gunpowder inside Rod's mouth, causing him to explode. The plan is a success, and they begin cutting down the flying pieces of flesh to find Rod Rice's true body and Historia is the one who kills him. Sometime after the fight, Levi and a subordinate return to the site of Rod's transformation and find Kenny sitting under a tree nearby. Kenny is heavily wounded and Levi sends the other soldier away, saying he'll be fine on his own. Levi comments that Kenny will likely succumb to his wounds soon, but is blindsided when Kenny smugly reveals that he's in possession of a Titan injection. Seeing through Kenny's bluff, Levi points out that if Kenny was inclined to use it, he would have done so already. Levi asks him about the first king and why he does not want humanity to survive, but Kenny only knows that it was for that reason that the Ackermans opposed him. When Levi, now knowing that his last name is Ackerman, asks Kenny exactly what he is to his mother, Kenny laughs and reveals that he was her older brother, thereby making him Levi's uncle. Shocked, Levi questioned him on why he abandoned him, and is told that the reason he left Levi is because he believed he was not fit to be a parent. He gives Levi the serum just before dying as Levi looked at his late uncle with a solemn expression. After Historia's coronation, Levi is confronted by the new queen who punches him and dares him to retaliate now that she is queen. However, instead of getting angry, he smiles and thanks her and the rest of his squad. Two months later, Levi backs up Historia on providing a home for the poor and orphans, considering that he is from the underground city as well. He is present at Tross when Hange Zoe is testing out the Titan guillotine and attends the military meeting where Erwin Smith goes over a new expedition to Shiganshina. 
The next morning, Levi and his squad visit Commandant Keith Sadies to find out what he knows about Aaron's father, Grisha. In a private follow-up between the heads of the military, Erwin decides to entrust Levi with the Titan Injection since he has the highest chance of surviving. It will be Levi's call if and when to use it. During a meeting with the other members of the Scout Regiment, Levi sits silently and listens to Hange tell Erwin what Keith explained to them on their visit. After the meeting is finished, Levi waits until all the other members have left and then shuts the door, intent on having a private conversation with Erwin. He tries to persuade Erwin to sit out on the upcoming mission to retake Wal Maria and to leave it to the others, telling him that in his weakened state, Erwin will simply be Titan food and that he is not willing to carry along any extra baggage. Erwin, however, explains to Levi that the chain of command must be preserved and that he has an intense desire to see what is in Grisha's basement, which prompts Levi to threaten to break both of his legs. However, this does not deter Erwin and Levi realizes that he will unfortunately not be able to change Erwin's mind even though he fears his death as a wounded soldier. Late that night, at a special red meat dinner, Levi breaks up a fight between Aaron and Jean by kicking and throwing them both into submission. He then orders that they and the rest of the corps go back to their quarters and go to bed. Shortly after, Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa talk about their returning home, and Levi listens to them while in the barn. As he hears Armin's ambitions, his expression is lowered and darkened. The next day, just before sunset, Levi, along with the other scout regiment leaders, salute the higher-ups of the brass. Levi watches on as the citizens of the Trost district cheer for the scouts and call out his name. He acts modest and calls them selfish before seeing Erwin cheer back at the enthusiastic civilians. Right after, the 58th expedition begins and Levi rides out with the scouts alongside Hange. Return to Shiganshina Arc Near dawn, the scout regiment walks on foot through a forest on a mountain leading their horses. Levi questions Dirk, asking if they are not still at the bottom of the mountain, worrying that it's almost dawn. Eventually, they reach Shinganshina district and ride in on their horses. Erwin orders the soldiers to be wary of hidden titans and orders them to switch to ODM gear and begin the mission. The soldiers leave their horses and rush towards the gate to Shinganshina. As Eren arrives atop the inner wall, he stares at the ruins of his hometown, prompting Levi to order him to continue on. Hange and Levi wonder why there are no titans in the area, and Levi claims that they have fallen right into the enemy's hands. However, the two agree that they must go forward with the plan anyway, as Eren flies up above the gate and prepares to transform. Once Eren had successfully sealed the hole in the wall, Levi reminds him that they have to kill all of their enemies, including Reiner and Berthold, before their mission will be truly finished. When Reiner is discovered by one of the scout regiment members and attempts to attack Armin, Levi attacks Reiner, shoving his blade through the nape of his neck and stabbing him before kicking him to the ground. After seeing that Reiner survived the brutal attack, Levi angrily laments that he was not able to kill Reiner. While on the ground, Reiner shifts into his titan form. Levi makes his way back to Erwin's side, where the latter begins issuing commands. He tasks Levi with helping to protect the horses, believing that Levi is the only soldier he can trust to take out the beast titan. He arrives first out of the two squads sent and immediately kills two titans, ordering the soldiers under his command that they cannot die. As Levi is protecting the recruits and the scout's horses, Dirk arrives to inform him that the titans in the area have been almost completely eradicated. At Dirk's urging, Levi agrees to rest for a minute, using the time to ponder whether things are going well on the other side of the wall. As he's contemplating, Levi and his soldiers are bombarded by a barrage of stones and boulders from the beast titan. Horrified, Levi tries to reach the other soldiers and help them, but is forced to take cover after another barrage of rocks is thrown. He retreats to the wall where he meets up with Erwin. Levi asks about Eren and Squad Hange's well-being, and Erwin informs the soldiers of their increasingly desperate situation. As the young recruits fall into a panic, Levi asks Erwin if he has some sort of plan. Regarding the situation, Levi gives Erwin the advice to save as many lives as possible by loading them on Eren to make an escape. Levi continues by saying that he will fight the Beast Titan. Although Levi knows that there's very little chance of victory, he deduces that there's still hope for the Scout Regiment if Erwin and Eren survive. But for Levi to take down the Beast Titan, Erwin must sacrifice himself and his men. At this point, Erwin is melancholic, but Levi makes the decision and swears that he will take down the Beast Titan after telling his commander that he must die for them. In an attempt to get closer to the Beast Titan, Levi uses the line of titans around him to his advantage while in an open space. To his side, he notices Erwin's men following closely behind, fear-stricken as they ride toward their death. As Erwin and most of the scouts fall, Levi takes out the surrounding titans and engages Zeke. Zeke attempts to crush Levi, who merely dodges, slicing up the titan's arm to pieces in the process. 
Levi then proceeds to slash the Beast Titan's eyes, blinding it, and then cuts up its ankles which causes it to topple over. Slicing open the nape, Levi thrusts his blade into Zeke's mouth, commenting that his body is heavily damaged after transforming into a titan so Zeke cannot transform again while he's busy healing. Further thrusting the blade through Zeke's cheek and above his right eye, Levi decides he cannot kill him yet, pondering over whether there's anyone still alive who he could use the titan injection on and would have them eat Zeke to steal his titan power. However, Levi's interrupted and shocked when the cart titan snatches Zeke and carries him away in its mouth. Zeke then orders the remaining titans to kill Levi, but Levi, remembering his promise to Erwin, finds his resolve and begins to take on the titans and chase down Zeke. Levi pursues Zeke and the cart titan back to Shinganshina district where he is stopped by his lack of supplies. He orders Eren to give him all of his gas and blades so he can continue the chase, but Eren panics and demands that Levi give Armin, who has been mortally wounded, the titan injection he's carrying. Levi hesitates but agrees. Just as he's about to hand Eren the serum, a recruit crawls up on the roof with Erwin, who is on the brink of death. Levi decides that he will give it to Erwin instead of Armin, which enrages Eren. Appalled at Eren and Mikasa, Levi reminds them of how important Erwin's survival is, and orders them not to let their feelings bias their decision. When Eren refuses to step down, Levi forcefully punches his face and knocks him aside, before being pinned down by an enraged Mikasa. Eren and Mikasa try to convince Levi of Armin's value, while Flock argues that Levi is correct to save Erwin, and a fight between them is only narrowly avoided by the arrival of Hange, who pulls Mikasa off of Levi. Levi prepares to inject Erwin, but is given pause by Eren, who tries to sway Levi by telling him of Armin's dream to see the ocean. Levi orders his comrades to leave him alone while he injects Erwin. As Levi prepares to inject Erwin, he recalls Armin's conversation with Eren and Mikasa about the ocean, and Erwin's dream to see the secrets locked in Eren's basement. As he begins injecting Erwin, Levi recalls Kenny's final words about people becoming slaves to their own desires, and is surprised when Erwin lashes out in his sleep, knocking away the syringe. As he watches Erwin, Levi recalls his order to Erwin to give up on his dreams and die with the rest of the scout recruits, and the look of relief on Erwin's face at the order. After injecting Armin, Levi watches as Armin's mindless titan form devours Berthold and explains to a confused flock that after all he is given, it is time for Erwin to finally rest. Levi attempts to apologize to Erwin for failing to kill the Beast Titan, but Hange informs him that Erwin has already died. On the top of the wall, Levi notices that Armin has awoken and fires a signal flare for the soldiers to regroup. He orders Eren to tell Armin about the events that occurred in the past few hours. Armin shows remorse for the measures his comrades have taken for him, but Levi advocates that he should not be regretful. Afterward, Levi follows Eren, Mikasa, and Hange to the Jaeger family's basement. When the group find that Eren's key cannot open the locked door, Levi proceeds to kick the door open. They inspect the basement thoroughly and Mikasa finds a drawer which needs Eren's key to unlock. Initially empty, Levi discovers a false bottom and under it are three hidden books kept intact with various preservatives. They open the first book and within it find an uncannily realistic portrait of Grisha standing behind a fair-haired woman and a child. On the back of it, Grisha has written that it is not an illustration, it's called a photograph and humanity has not perished. While serving their punishment in jail cells, Mikasa and Eren discuss the journals and Grisha's memories until Hange, Levi, and Armin interrupt Eren and provoke them about what they were talking about until Levi accuses him of going through a phase as a teenager and lets them go, claiming that their sentence is being cut short because of their low numbers and their superior's failure to catch the armored and beast titans. Their group, now with Jean, meet Historia afterwards to speak with her as she finishes reading a letter left to her by Amir. After the meeting, everyone, including all the other military commanders and officials, meet to discuss the recent expedition, the journals, and the huge loss of life. Once the information obtained from Eren's basement is released to the world, Hange and Levi meet with Roy and Pierre to discuss the revelations and how the public is handling it. The royal government plans for the scouts to be awarded with medals in a ceremony for their bravery and success. Overhearing a fight breaking out among their younger recruits, Levi cuts in to stop them and tell them to prepare for the beginning of the ceremony. A military audience gathers in a large room where Historia presents each of the nine soldiers with a medal of honor in the form of a dark bolo tie with the wings of freedom on it. Months later, in the summer season, Shinganshina district is once again populated with people as all the titans have been cleared out. Finally, the scouts once again venture outside of the Wall Maria on an expedition for the first time in six years. They find a trail left by a titan crawling along the ground and follow it until they reach the edge of Paradise Island. Hange gleefully begins picking up ocean materials such as coral to Levi's dismay as he attempts to caution her against touching the water. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.